I find it fascinating how our Christian journey can take us on all these different pathways and 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 challenges, as well as the excitement part of it. And um, I just want to tell you a little bit of my story. I'm, I'm Kelvin Holiday. Uh, like before called Kel. Um, it's only Kelvin when I'm in trouble, um, particularly for my wife or my mum. Um, but uh, I just wanted to tell my story a little bit about my uh, my personal journey of faith. And it started um, very early when I met my wife. Uh, she was something very unique and um, something I've been looking for in my life and something very attractive about her. I come from a non-Christian background. And when I met her, she was just different. And um, and I got to know her a little bit more and found out that her father was a pastor and she was a Christian lady and still didn't really understand too much about that. But uh, anyway, I was attracted and uh, pursued and eventually um, something happened and um, I started to go to church on my own uh, accord rather than actually uh, towing along after this uh, beautiful young lady and going to church was something I started to do while she was, she was a nurse and she was off to work and and so I started to go there when she wasn't there and um, one day I actually found myself you know, coming and you know, doing the, the altar call and walking down the front and, and committing my life to Christ but it was not an easy pathway yeah you know, coming from a non-christian background i had no real support and 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 my wife while she was a strong christian lady uh, not a lot of people in my life um, could help disciple me and so my my whole journey of faith was very stagnant very very spontaneous yeah you know, i d- definitely had that encounter with the holy spirit to really um, touch my heart and to really know what was for my future and uh, where my faith was but the 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 whole discipleship process was was very very scattered, and um, I was in a very busy sort of role. I was I was a builder at the time and going out of that into other areas, <clears throat> and so travel was a, a huge part of my of my journey and my and my life. So I travelled to all sorts of different places and spent a lot a lot of time in motels. And you've probably heard this sort of story about the Gideons before and the mountain way, but. What happened for me was is it was literally getting to those motels and seeing the the Bible there and the consistency and being able to, you know, that was, the, that was my time. You know, by the time I got to a motel room at the end of, end of a day, sat down in there and I go, and I just like relax and go, oh, what am I going to do? I, could, I had a choice. You know, we could turn on the idiot box, turn on the TV, or I could, I could actually go into the drawer and I always knew there was going to be, when I got to the motel, there would always be the Gideon's Bible there. And so that really was um, my thread, my thing that actually held me together in those early days until such time as a guy by Bruce Dowling. Um, I played soccer at those days and uh, he also came along beside me and just said to me, hey, mate, yeah, he, he, he knew where I'd come from. We'd been to school together and he then helped me. And so my, my, my first Bible, and, and again, my whole ethics was probably a little bit out the window. And like a lot of people, that um, one of those Gideon Bibles ended up at my home after a motel room. So I'm, I'm confessing now. Um, but that's where it ended up. But I ended up taking it back one day. So, But it was the, the Gideon's uh, ministry to me in such a subtle way was, was quite impacting. Um, and what was the impact was the consistency. And for me, having that consistent, I just knew that there was a group of people that would be there consistently supporting wherever I was in need. And um, yeah, so some, sometimes, you know, it would just literally, I would just see the Bible there and it would be an inspiration just to pray or an inspiration to commit whatever it was in my day over to God. And so my appreciation goes out to the Gideons and um, for, for that faith to be able to put the scriptures out there into the world in a way that makes an impact. And it's that consistency, be consistently consistent. I've always said that in my own business and uh, this consistency of doing things that you're called to do and to keep on doing it well. And um, yes, I just want to say thank you. Um, Bless you as you continue on your ministry. Um, I understand about a little bit about the the ministry now and looking forward to, to getting it down a little bit more. But um, I think the one passage of scripture that still to this day impacts me that I read was from Romans 12 too. And that is, uh, do, do not be conformed to the world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. 
and it's through that consistency of learning, that consistency of opening up the scriptures and doing it. And we all get into into challenges of not doing that at times. I've been through periods, and even just now, as I'm making this video, I've been asked to to just to give a little bit of an insight into my own life and the the impact that Gideon's have made. I I know now that there's we can never do enough to really know about the the Word of God and, and how He impacts our lives. And we can never be too close. We can never spend too much time in prayer. We can never spend too much time in His Word. So uh, i just leave you with that. So the way in which we grow is to get the old grey matter up here working better. So do not be conformed to the world. Don't let the world say that this is a bunch of kibosh or, or that um, the things in the world will get in your way. There's always something to be done. The world wants us to run at a fast pace. And um, it's not until we actually pick up the Word of God that we can actually go, ah, maybe there is something better. And there is.